What? Today is a fun work work Wednesday. So I got up super early. I did several hours of my J-O-B and all my awesome online marketing website stuff. Off to the yoga studio, a couple more hours, and now I'm taking a break to lay down a little bit of information about today's exciting radio interview. Yes, you heard me right. Uh, I will be on KUCI, on the uh, UCI campus in Irvine, and I will be sitting down uh, with one of the students there. Her name's Alejandra, and she hosts a show on Wednesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. The show is The Art Club, Art History and the Artists Who Make History. And I met Alejandra a few weeks ago when I was in one of her classes speaking. So this spring I have joined a little speakers bureau for people living with HIV and AIDS. And I've decided to give back and to share my story uh, on campuses, college and high school about my journey with HIV and AIDS, some of the life lessons, some of the dark, <laughs> terrible things around it and like, well, just around the journey. There's my 15 years this spring with HIV and AIDS. Uh, it's just like a mini life. There's ups and downs and um, truthfully, HIV and AIDS has been one of the great teachers of my life. And so since I'm in a place in my life now where a lot of things are coming into alignment and I have a lot of health and strength and purpose and passion and creativity and gratitude uh, to be alive and to be defining my life. And so I've decided to share and give back. And so Alejandra was in one of those classes and she asked to speak with me afterwards and asked if I'd be interested in coming on her show. I guess today will be the last episode of the season and semester school's ending. And we're going to talk about art. She heard me talk about a project that I want to work on. And so I thought I'd post a little story here. So moving forward, I'm going to give quite a bit of information about some of the things we're discussing today in the radio broadcast interview. Um, but for those of you that just want to tail out of here, um, feel free to go to my website. You can get the link in my bio. It's viralmindfulness.com forward slash K-U-C-I. And today's interview is live on their website. Uh, I've got it all at the, my website where you can follow the link um, to KUCI.org and you can listen to it live from 4.30 p.m. to 5 today. If you miss it live, I will be here on Instagram stories later and throughout this um, showing you the behind the scenes as I head over there, as I go into the sound booth. Um, and I'm going to film a live uh, Instagram from the interview so you can see the behind the scenes on video of us talking. Um, so follow the link in my bio to get the details and then coming now I'm just going to share a little bit about what we're talking about today. So in 2012 I redesigned my life and I resigned from working in Utah as a social worker and I came to California and began a new adventure and journey. And my primary intention was to become an HIV AIDS advocate and speaker and to move along college campuses and to turn that into a full-time position. Unfortunately, as life unfolds, I wasn't able to figure it out and um, I made a lot of mistakes um, I learned a lot and ultimately I bumped into one of my great addictions and frenemies. <laughs> I call it a friend because I don't seem to find much of a positive relationship if I don't find the blessing or the working relationship with the darkness or the negativity or the perceived darkness or negativity in my life. And so in 2013 and 14, I was in transition and I lost my first big death to my ex-boyfriend, Jake, of uh, back in Utah. We spent five years together. I actually met him the day I was diagnosed with HIV. And we spent five years together in a very intense relationship. And I really fell in love with him. And I also fell into an attachment to him. And he was HIV positive. He helped 
me into some very interesting places uh, spiritually and opening up my mind to meditation and yoga and to life. And also with him, we began a, our first experience and journey using drugs, specifically crystal meth. And so I had gone many years after we broke up sober and uh, from crystal meth and continued to use other substances. And in 2013, 14, when I got news of Jake's death and with me being in transition and not quite figuring out life and what I had hoped for and lots of things, I hit a very unique melting point and I started using crystal meth again and I got right back into my addiction and it just picked up full speed. So in 2015, I decided to get sober. Um, thankfully, I hit the bottom, so to speak, as many discuss and share. Um, and I decided to take some suggestions and to try 12-step meetings and to work the 12 steps I had never done it before. And so coming up in just a couple weeks, it'll be three years that I set down crystal meth. And then coming up this summer in August, it'll be three years since I set down marijuana. And September, it is everything including alcohol. And so I've been working close to three years of a full sobriety for me. And there's so many lessons and experiences about living with HIV and AIDS. Um, but today on the program, we're going to be talking about art. And so back in 2012, 13, Martin Luther King Jr., there was a quote I found as I was doing research um, to kind of move uh, forward with this sort of HIV AIDS sort of education and storytelling. And Martin Luther King Jr. said, as my sufferings mounted, I soon realized that there were two ways I could respond to my situation, either to react with bitterness or seek to transform the suffering into a creative force. I decided to follow the latter course. And when I found this, it really spoke to me based on what I was hoping to do in 2013, which was to move my story online, to start taking coaching clients online, to try and figure out ways to talk more about HIV AIDS. And so I started Viral Mindfulness. Um, for those of you that have followed me for a while, in 2011, I had an online space called Bless Your Virus. I went on CNN in 2011 uh, in a national interview to talk about my whole concept of blessing my virus and learning to become friends with HIV and how it changed a lot of things for me with how I related to what was happening to me. And so in 2013-14, I decided to kind of make a larger scope of mindfulness based on viral mindfulness and a place where I could all not only discuss HIV AIDS, but I could discuss creativity and art and the music and the watercolor and the writing in my life and the poetry. Also, I could discuss meditation and yoga and mindfulness. And I could talk about the professional experiences I had for a decade helping other people and how I've learned to kind of set up a world or a practice of mindfulness for me to make sense of some of my life story. And so going back into my addiction was totally unexpected, totally humiliating, totally uh, very dangerous too. I put myself in a lot of dangerous situations and others as well. And thankfully, I was consistently on my HIV medications, which means if you're current on information and research, if you're on meds and you're taking them properly, it means I'm undetectable. It means that my fluids do not carry any trace of the virus. It's undetectable copies, which means I don't transmit the virus, which I am so grateful that I was in that situation. But I know from the world that I belong to and have belonged to with addiction and feeling very stigmatized and separate. There's a lot of, there's a lot there and I want to continue to help. I have been blessed with white skin and privilege. I am blessed with education. I am blessed with a great job and in healthcare. Um, Radiant Healthcare in Orange County here has helped me tremendously to get started here with my new business. Um, I run a small business on my own doing online marketing and social media 
And it's been such a godsend to have someone specific to HIV AIDS to help. And so that's who I speak for. They've um, enlarged their scope to move beyond HIV AIDS at this point to all the LGBTQ community with um, radiant healthcare. So I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about what I mentioned in this class lecture um, that I did. Um, I was talking about how I have this huge, large container, thousands of dollars worth of HIV meds. And this is from a couple bottles of my exes. And then these are old bottles when I, when I changed a cocktail, an antiretroviral therapy HIV medication cocktail. Um, I had to make some changes when I moved here in 2012. And so I have all these extra pills and I just kept them all. And they kind of stood as a reminder in a glass apothecary bottle of my journey with medicine and antiretroviral therapy, which ironically or poetically, ART is the acronym for these antiretroviral therapies. And I'm very grateful. Uh, the reason I have an AIDS diagnosis is in 2008, um, I did not, I wanted to take a break, actually 2007, from the cocktail when I lived in Utah to see what my body could do on its own. It's not uncommon that people do this. It's called a, stru a structured treatment interruption, um, a drug holiday. I don't think my doctor at the time was a big fan, but she supported me. She heard what I wanted and needed. And so... Um, I tried it and I, my immune system tanked within a year and my CD4 count or T cell helper cells dropped below 200, which is officially an AIDS diagnosis. So at that point I chose medication in a different space, gratitude. And you all know that gratitude is such a great lens to look at your life and world, the world with. What do we have to be grateful for? How can I find gratitude in this situation? And frankly, that's what I've attempted to do. And I guess I'm here now after 15 years. And I wouldn't be surprised if I roll over and find some sorrow and sadness. I often do. But I feel like after 15 years, there are some pivotal shifts that have happened within me. And I'm super grateful to be alive. And since 2015, I am so grateful to be sober. I know that that's... Um, an interesting conversation. For me, I could no longer handle anything because I'm always trying to get back to crystal math. And that's what happened with my short, you know, my five year interim just from math. It didn't work. And I just want to stay focused on being alive and sharing all of the beautiful things that I plan to do over the next remaining time of my life. And for many of you who have followed me from the beginning, you've been with me and I'm so grateful. And for all of you newcomers, welcome to my online world. Um, I'm so excited to be at this point in my life and I'm going to be working on some art specific to HIV and AIDS and stigma. Because one of the things that I feel passionate about is creating a voice. And now for me is to create a story of hope and second chances. There were a lot of unfortunate things that happened for me in getting well in transmitting the virus and coming into contact with it in 2003 and you know frankly we all have unfortunate situations and diagnoses and health conditions this world is full of all of that and I believe this world is also full of so much beauty and so much kindness and compassion and I'm all about spreading spiritually transmitted ideas now spreading STIs that I deliberately want to do. And that's what my online world is about. And to be a voice for HIV and AIDS and drug use and recovery, my health is stellar. I have such great things going for me and that are coming. And part of what's coming this year is I'm working on a guided meditation 10 week course. I hope to have it launched in the summer for you all to gain access to learn how to use guided imagery and to begin the meditation journey because hands down when I was a clinical social worker for 10 years, I would say one of the top three things in most mental health issues most is meditation and mindfulness, learning how to breathe, learning how to set up a official place to meditate and learn to work with the stillness and learn to work with this. So I'm going to just 
I digress some, and I'm going to come back to the art and just give you a little info. So all of you who joined today from KUCI, um, please stay connected with me. You can subscribe over at my website. I'll put you on the list. It's my list. I'll send you updates. Um, there's a lot of juicy stuff coming your way, including some of my artwork with the medications. So Alejandra and I talked today about my desire to crush up these pills and mix these with paint and create different textures with some of the artwork and the poems that I have specific to HIV and AIDS. So this idea really comes from one of my very best friends and he's a fantastic artist. And he has kind of been like a mentor to me as well with regards to art. And he's always invited me and challenged me. And I've gotten to see some of his work. This is one of his pieces here. Um, this one is a very special personal piece he made for me. Um, I was part of loving and being the godfather to this amazing chihuahua named Franny. And uh, a few years ago, she got taken by a coyote in front of me and... She had been spending a few weeks with me getting better from some different, getting better from some different healthcare things. And so part of what Rockford did in this piece is he asked, I got some of her ashes. And so all of this dark blue is actually some of her ashes that were mixed in. And then up here in her halo, those are seashells from Dog Beach over in Huntington Beach when he and I went and walked with the dogs after a couple days after this event happened. She was attacked and then I had to gather her body and take her to the emergency room and her parents met me there, my brother and my sister-in-law. She didn't make it. They made the decision to put her down. Um, and so that was the day we first went walking because I'm like, I need to go be around the dogs at the beach. I'm scared, but we must move into the discomfort. So Rockford loves to use texture. And I had heard some other uh, information about other artists that were using their blood, their HIV positive blood, because the fluids are such a big part of the stigma and how the virus transmits. And so I played around one time I was doing a home test for a video education series and these are drops of my own blood here. Um, and I kind of was just sketching, coming up with some concepts about lemonades and learning to sit with the sour parts in your life. Um, when life handed me AIDS, I decided to wake up and trust the sour parts. So I started doing a lot of preliminary sketches and ideas about how I could integrate some of my art. And so at this point, I'm just gonna show you a couple of the pieces and where I'm headed. I've got this whole huge container of medications. And I started writing poetry this year for my 15th commemoration in March um, in honor of Emily Dickinson and my, my passion and love for poetry. I've been on a extended program this year with one of my new friends. Um, he's a poet and he's a doctor and he's a good friend now in my life and we love poetry. He actually is just quite prolific and quite magical. And so he's been sharing his like some of his favorite authors and so this year's been like a crash course and I started writing uh, Emily Dick Dickinson has, I was gonna say Emily Dixon, because that's my drag name. I'm gonna do a char drag character um, that's named Emily Dixon. <laughs> she wrote little, like, little prose and poems on these envelopes. And so there's a collection in an anthology. You can go down below and Instagram here, one of my posts. You can see one of mine and a little bit of more info written about Emily Dixon, and I'll put it on the website as well. So I've written quite a few poems and I want to create a piece that I can sell where proceeds will also go to some really exciting plans I have over the next five to ten years about bringing people's art to life who are HIV positive and those who have died in the early years who died far too early whose art is still wanting to be made. Oh my gosh! Fun! So... 
Here's a piece that I want to recreate. These are some watercolors I did, and I've started painting live artists and sketching with pen and pencil up in Hollywood at the Tom House. And this is a very interesting organization, Tom of Finland, that has some direct links to HIV and AIDS. Here's another one. And so all of these now I'm going to integrate with different texture, crushing up these meds, mixing them with paint. I'll probably have to use more than just watercolor to kind of see how the, the, the um, chemistry of the medicine mixes with the paint and the water. This is another interesting one as well from a live model class. This is a Sharpie sort of piece that I did. This is my ex, Jake. And this is the two of us. We were actually high at the time in this picture. And so I sketched this picture with a Sharpie. And so this is begging to be connected to this antiretroviral therapy. Now, mind you, there might be some naked things. Since we're on Instagram, I'll just kind of, you know, cover some that are most offensive. But this is, you know, <laughs> a penis. So this is an interesting one with a lot of color. Um, I was traveling in the Red Rocks um, in Moab, Utah, and I thought that I really wanted to create something about the the divinity and the connection that I feel in nature and how this could work as well. Um, this is a piece that I did because, you know, I've always had a love for Ariel and the Little Mermaid. And back in the day when it first launched in 1989, part of your world was such a prolific song and message. And I think it resonates with all of us because we all long to belong to different worlds that we don't. And I know for me back then, I so longed to belong to the gay world. And so this is just kind of a fun variation. So a lot of these I will recreate, or I will use this original and add the texture. Um, this is one I've been doing that is my dad. I was visiting him in Arizona and I was buying some wigs and some a big fur coat right here for Burning Man. I'm going to Burning Man at the end of the summer. So he was trying on my Burning Man coats and costumes and I put this wig on him. So I took pictures of him in drag, so to speak. So this is called Daddy Drag. So this is a working piece and I'm gonna definitely put some meds into that as well. Um, I have started here with um, a new sketchbook of mine. And this sketchbook is where I'm going to be putting a lot of my current pieces. The first one that I did without any of the meds and stuff is one of Franny. This is the dog. This is the first time I painted her since that event a few years ago. She was snuggled up in my blankets. And this is called Cashmere Franny. She loved to snuggle and she and I love to snuggle in my cashmere blankets. And so then I write a poem on the back and I also have color palettes that go with the painting I'm working on and I write poems on the back there about the piece. So then here's where Daddy Drag showed up. So this is where the original or the final piece will be with Daddy Drag. And I'm gonna put Burning Man in the background and then the medications are gonna go probably in the desert and not quite sure. So there's lots of fun things coming your way here. So I'm so honored and grateful to be sharing more of my story these days. And even most important, I truly am grateful to be alive because I know that a lot of people don't have the same access that I have. And I know there were a lot of people before the cocktail, the art, the antiretroviral therapy in 1996, 97, before it came into full force. So many of my people specific to the LGBTQ community died way too young and died way too alone and way too afraid. And their art and their projects are still out there. They want to be discovered, and I'm on a journey to encourage that to happen. So thanks for joining me today for this extra long story thread. And I'll be uh, checking in with behind the scenes as I head over to UCI. I've got to get back to my work, work, work with my online marketing stuff. I'm building this really amazing website for this client that I've been with for five years. And so 
Blessings on your Wednesday. Work, 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 everybody. And I will see you over at my website. Follow the link. Bye.